So in today's video, I wanna show you how you can permanently loosen tight calf muscles. Now this video is the third in a series of videos that are looking to try and show you how to fix long-term muscle tightness by not only showing you how to mobilize that tissue effectively, but also going hunting for what might be causing that musculature to be tight in the first place. There has to be a physical musculoskeletal reason behind why those calf muscles have been asked to tighten up and a reason that you need to figure out and address if you want those calf muscles to not feel tight forever going forwards. So what I wanna to get to in this video is I wanna go through one or two different variations of calf mobility techniques that you can try that'll hopefully give you an instant change in how tight your calf musculature feels. But then I also wanna to touch on two of the main underlying causes of why those calf muscles have become tight and then give you something to work on to help improve the function of those two areas. And interestingly, may also help make your calf muscle feel some degree looser straight away. So let's get into it. So if you specifically feel like one of your calves has become become tighter than the other, or you feel like you've had tight calves for as long as you can remember, clinically there has to be a reason behind why that's the case. And one of the hidden underlying causes of calf tightness that I find as a physiotherapist is lower back dysfunction. If you've seen the previous videos in this series, you'll also know that hamstring tightness and psoas muscle tightness can also be a consequence of spinal dysfunction as well. And the reason why your calves may be tight can be very similar. Neurally, the sciatic nerve comes from different aspects of your lower back and travels straight down the back of your leg before influencing your calf tissue. Any restriction at the origin of that nerve can pull a bunch of mechanical slack out of that tissue, prompting the calf muscles to also become tight. And if not addressed, all the calf muscle stretches in the world may have some impact, but ultimately will be limited over time if we're not getting to one of the potential underlying causes of why that calf has become tight in the first place. And if you've been a fan of the channel, you'll know there's a number of different ways you can mobilize stiff joints and tight soft tissue in the lower back. And a really simple way to do that can be just using a foam roller. But again, what we we need to make sure that we do before we get to these exercises is it's really important for you to establish a baseline of how tight your calf muscle feels in the moment so that as you do each one of these techniques and the calf stretches and mobility stuff that we'll get to in a second you need to know exactly what they do to you and your symptoms because if i say to you that something like lower back stiffness and restriction can be the underlying cause of your calf muscle tightness that may not intuitively make a lot of sense to you until you take note of how tight your calf feels but then immediately free up your lower back and then you immediately go back and re stretch that calf again to see if anything is physically changed in that instance. Because I ultimately don't want you to have to trust anything that I say. We need to base everything that we do on results so that the results speak for themselves. So all we want you to do is with your foam roller, we can start with the foam roller at the base of your rib cage. As always, we want you to lie down over the top of that roller. Some people like to have their hands behind their head, keeping their bottom down and just gently extend back as far as you feel comfortable, putting some pressure through some of that stiffness. For other people, you might find it's easier to bridge your hips up have your head on the ground and then drop your hips back down again to tension up the tissue that you're trying to mobilize. But what's important, regardless of which technique you use, is that once you find the segment of your spine that may feel a little bit stiff, tight and restricted, we then wanna compare your left to your right because one side is generally more stiff and restricted than the other. And as always for me, my left hand side, the side closest to the camera, is often that little bit stiffer for me. So if I just gently rotate my body to my left a little bit, I've found a segment here that feels a little bit tight and then and all I need to do is just hang out here and let the foam roller gently press into the joints of the spine, prompting them to mobilize. If we want to speed that up if there's some tight soft tissue over the top. Once I've found that stiff joint, I can gently squeeze that tissue underneath. I can tense my abs, tense the muscles in my back for five to 10 seconds. This gets my brain involved so that when I stop tensing, it'll relax a little bit. And you should feel like the roller sinks in a little bit deeper or you can go a little bit further into the stretch before you find that same stiffness and tightness again. And then systematically work your way up and down each segment of your spine looking for the levels that you need to work through and mobilize to feed some slack back into that nerve and ultimately feed some slack back into that calf tissue. And as I said before, once you've spent 5, 10, 15 minutes segmentally working through any of those stiff, tight and restricted tissues that you may find, immediately go back and do your calf stretch again to see if anything has physically changed. Because if you free up your lower back and you can immediately find more mobility through the tissue in your calf without touching your calf muscle, then that'll hopefully confirm to you that the lower back or hidden dysfunction in the lower back could have been one of the main hidden underlying causes of why that tissue is asked to be tight for you without you realizing. So the second potentially hidden piece of the puzzle behind why your calf muscles may have become tight in the first place is ankle joint stiffness. Now again, to separate these two ideas, we're not talking about muscular restriction here. We're talking about stiffness and rustiness in the joint underneath at the ankle itself. 
and in my experience as a physiotherapist, one of the best exercises to try and mobilize a stiff ankle joint is the banded ankle stretch. So all this stretch requires is if you can get a power band or a TheraBand or an Oki strap or anything that you have that has a bit of elasticity to it, place that band just underneath the bones of your ankle, placing that foot down as far out away from the band as you feel comfortable, step past the band, and then we wanna gently bend and flex into the end range of your ankle dorsiflexion by closing down that ankle as much as you feel comfortable. Oscillating in and out of that range really helps promote and prompt that tissue to become less stiff and less restricted over time. The band itself is an amazing way that to create what we call an accessory movement that needs to happen when your tibia or your shin bone moves over the top of your foot. And stiffness in the back of the ankle specifically can be one of the main reasons why we suffer from things like ankle impingements, Achilles type issues, and a lot of other foot and ankle dysfunctions. So gently working in and out of that end range, it's okay if you lift your heel up a little bit, but the one thing that we need to make sure that you're not doing is compensating for that stiffness while you're doing this movement. Because what can be very easy to do is that when you stretch the band out and try and bend that ankle as far as you feel comfortable, if you have some stiffness in your ankle, it's very easy to reach the end of that stiffness and then for your whole leg to dump inwards to go around that stiffness. And what you might find that is if you collapse your arch, drop your knee and allow it to go inwards, you'll go further than if you kept your knee out and tried to go through that ankle stiffness. We don't care how far you go into this stretch. I just care whether you feel like you're going in a linear plane or you're dumping in and going around it. But keep working in and out of that ankle, looking to try and get to the end of that range and prompt that ankle to mobilize. And again, once you've finished with that, you should immediately feel like your ankle and your foot feel a little bit lighter than it did before. And then when you go back to the same stretches that you may have done before the exercise, you should feel like there is instantaneously some more motion there than what there was previously. But as I said before, if you are just stretching your calf muscles and hoping that that is enough to cure you of your calf muscle tightness, then realistically it may never happen for you unless you go looking for some hidden dysfunction in your lower back and some hidden dysfunction in your ankle joints. But let me know in the comments down below which one of your back or your ankle mobility gave you the greatest sense of increased flexibility through your calf muscle and then attach it to these other exercises that we're going to go through to try and get that calf muscle to feel super loose quite quickly. So once you've figured out how much your lower back and ankle joint are contributing to your calf muscle tightness, we then need to give you some effective strategies to physically release that calf muscle tightness quickly. Now, as you may know, the calf muscle itself isn't just one muscle, but it's a complex made up of two main muscle groups. Your gastrocnemius, which is the long one, the bulky muscle that we all tend to see when you look at someone from behind, and your soleus muscle, which is more of the driving force of a lot of movement that sits a little bit deeper behind that gastroc. And as you may know, in order to stretch both of those different muscles, we just need to tweak how we do each exercise to cover those bases. So for me as a physiotherapist, I find one of the most effective ways to quickly mobilize tight calf muscles is using a step. Now you can do both of these exercises that we're gonna to get to on the floor if that's more convenient to you, but a step allows us to get a little bit deeper into the end ranges with a little bit more body weight than doing it on the floor up against a wall may do. But choose the version that you feel is the easiest for you to do and gives you the best results, but just make sure that you focus on this one technique regardless of which option you choose. So let's start by stretching the gastrocnemius muscle and all that requires us to do in this instance is to keep your leg straight and drop your heel off the back of a step. Now what we used to promote all the time was that just holding this stretch was the thing that you needed to do. Maybe you had to do it for 15 seconds, 30 seconds. The idea being is that eventually that calf muscle will give and it will stretch. But that never respects the fact that your brain and nervous system are asking your gastrocnemius muscle to be tight in the first place. So just hanging off this doesn't address that neuromuscular component that's going on behind the scenes. So instead what you need to do is once you've found the best version of this by dropping your heel down, just gently twisting your hips from side to side to try and find which part of that gastroc is the most tight for you. For me, I find that this particular position where I'm rotated out a little bit, it's the outside of my gastroc a little bit more. Again, instead of holding this position, we need to squeeze that muscle as much as we can. We need to actively tense that tight spot, get our brain and nervous system involved for five to 10 seconds. The idea being is that when we stop tensing, that tissue physically creates a reflex where that tissue will give. And you should be able to go a little bit deeper into the stretch than what you could before immediately. And again, it's just repeating that process of squeezing, holding that for five to 10 seconds, relaxing, sinking down a little bit further, hunting around for where the next best version of that tightness might be and repeating that process until you either get sick of it or you feel like you've stopped making change. And then when trying to stretch a tight soleus, the only thing that really needs to change here is that instead of having your legs straight, 
If we bend your knee and then try and let your heel hang off the step, you'll feel the tightness will move from somewhere higher up into your calf, further down towards your ankle joint. The bending that knee will target this area a little bit differently, but we want to create the same tension that we did before. So once you've found which version of this stretch feels the best for you, wherever it feels tight, give it a squeeze. For me, my soleus doesn't feel as tight here compared to my gastroc, doesn't matter. We want to stretch it anyway. Give it a squeeze for five to 10, relax. It'll go a little bit deeper. Give it another squeeze. Keep repeating that process until you stop making change or you get sick of it. And then once you spend some time physically trying to mobilize those tight muscles, it goes without saying that calf muscle strength is still really important. Doing simple things like calf raises with your legs straight and your legs bent can be a great way to strengthen those muscles as well. Sometimes calves can be tight because they're not strong enough to handle the load that you need to put through them. So it's also worthwhile making sure that you do spend some time strengthening those tissues as well, even though I'm not gonna go through it in too much detail in this particular video. So once you physically feel like you've addressed some of that gastroc or soleus muscular tightness, you've worked on your lower back dysfunction and any hidden ankle restriction as well, we also can go looking for any other dysfunction around that calf that you might be perceiving as tight calf muscles. And a great way to figure this out for yourself is again to do your calf muscle stretch before and after this, but take a ball or a foam roller and when you go hunting around those calf muscles to see what we can find. I'm not a big fan of rolling up and down. I don't feel like it is as effective as the things we're about to go through. Instead, once you you find a spot that feels particularly tight and tender and again you might need to roll onto the outside or roll onto the inside to find that it may not just be a linear motion up and down the back of your calf for me i feel a little bit tight on the outside of this calf here so instead of rolling around on the roller what i'll get you to do is let your leg rest and then bend and flex your ankle over the top of that to try and shear free that tissue underneath now depending on how comfortable this feels for you you might need to do some contractor relax over the top beforehand where i find a particularly tight tender spot here for me if i can tense my calf muscle up over the top of that for five to ten seconds same thing that we did before with your gastroc and soleus stretches it creates the same reflex that when i stop tensing it doesn't feel as tender it doesn't feel as thick and tight there i feel like my calf has sunk into the roller a little bit more than it had before it can then make the rest of this more palatable for you so again put a bit of pressure through there gently bend and flex that ankle try and shear that calf muscle free if you need a little bit more pressure you can put more pressure through that even just the extra weight of your leg can make a big difference here but same thing bend and flex that tissue use movement to shear free some of those hidden underlying restrictions. And again, while this may not necessarily lengthen a tight calf muscle, it can definitely feed some more slack into the area, making you feel less tight through that calf area. Just go hunting up and down, move the roller down as low as you feel you need to, go hunting in and out around that, bending and flexing it, tensing, relaxing it, depending on what you need to do. And then as we're doing through this video, immediately recheck your calf flexibility afterwards to see if you've made some tangible progress. And so the final thing, which is always really important to talk about when trying to solve any dysfunction at all, is why are you having to do the things that you're doing in the first place? So if through the course of this video, you've hopefully found a, a different stretch for your calf muscles that make them feel instantly looser than they did before, maybe adding some strength to those muscles has also helped decrease how tight they feel. But if you have found that certain segments of your back that when you release them, make your calf muscle feel looser. Or if when you mobilize some ankle joint stiffness, you also feel like you fed some more slack back into those calves, prompting them to be less tight. There has to be a reason as always as to why those segments of your back have become stiff and tight or why your ankle has become stiff and tight without you realizing it. So as always, in the spirit of trying to resolve calf tightness forever, in a way, understanding the role that your back and your ankle has on your calf is important. But if we don't keep taking that step back and ask why those things are there in the first place, then again, it's potentially unrealistic to expect that the chain reaction of events that's causing that calf tightness will ever go away. And so for me as a physio, and again, if you've been a fan of the channel and seen my videos, you'll know where I'm gonna go with this. But if you have found that with your lower back, maybe it's the base of your rib cage, maybe it's right down the base of your spine, that when you release any one of those segments, you feel your calf feels looser, there has to be a reason why that part of your back has become stiff. So for me clinically as a physiotherapist, when I'm trying to understand understand this for my patients, generally the best place to start isn't with the active interesting things because you're not really in the one position too often. It's better to start with the stationary shapes and postures that you get into the most to look for clues as to why specific parts of your spine have become stiff, tight and restricted. So again, if you're someone who has found that this particular level has become stiff, tight and restricted for you, and when you release it, your calf gets better, then it's very likely that there's a position that you're getting into throughout the day, whether you're either hinging and slouching through that part of your back and staying 
staying there or leaning and bending forward through that part of your back consistently throughout the day. And again, that can be any number of things. It can be something as simple as sitting up in bed, reading a book, using your phone, sitting at a desk, sitting at a computer, sitting on the couch, watching TV, driving in a car. It doesn't really matter what activity or scenario you find yourself in. If you are consistently in a position that compromises a specific section of your back without you realizing it, then we need to address this long-term to stave off that chain reaction of events that might be leading to that calf being a problem. So it can be something as simple as being more conscious of being up tall. You can roll up a towel, grab a cushion, jam it in there to fill the gap that your back is trying to fit, but try and pay attention to what those shapes and postures might be and try and find ways to make that easier for you to stay in a better posture long-term. And in terms of ankle joint stiffness, for me clinically as a physio, the two biggest reasons that I find that cause ankle stiffness, the first one is probably less obvious, which is sitting down a lot. Whereas if you're sitting down in the same position all day in that sort of 90 degree position, then your ankles are essentially in the same shape all the time. And if you're not expressing that deeper range of motion by either squatting or through sport or activity, then the amount of ankle range that you don't use, you obviously lose over time. So again, trying to get you out of that sitting position, getting you walking around, practicing some deeper squats, some lunges, or just expressing as much full range of motion as you can, can be a great way to maintain ankle flexibility. But again, if you've been a fan of the channel, you'll also know that the other and potentially main reason why your ankles may have unknowingly become stiff in the first place is heeled footwear. Now that can be regular sports shoes like runners or sneakers. It can also be business shoes. It can also be thongs or flip-flops and sandals. Anything that has a heel that's thicker at the back than it is at the front, again, is the exact amount of ankle range that you will not get access to while using that shoe. So while it's also unrealistic to say, hey, let's be barefoot forever, it may also feel uncomfortable for you to immediately go for a flat shoe. But over time, we want everyone to eventually be able to feel comfortable tolerating barefoot shoes or flat shoes or just being barefoot so that your ankle and your calf muscles can be exposed to the types of range of motion that they need to to stave off some of that tightness. But as always, if we aren't looking for those broader perspectives, some of which may surprise you, then trying to solve tight calves as it is with any tissue might be unrealistic unless you take that broader perspective and try and change a few simple things. So once again, I genuinely hope that was helpful. If it was, please let me know in the comments down below. If you know someone that might benefit from watching this video, please share it to them so they can have a watch themselves. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content and you have found it insightful. And if you are someone who has been dealing with some issues that you just can't seem to get on top of, please consider booking in an online consultation with me. I'll leave a link in the description below. Once again, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.